Wednesday, August 30th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning, 1020 California time. And we start out with the stock market indexes, the S&P 500, specifically the SPY. So this rally yesterday in particular and further rally today is carrying higher prices than I was originally expecting the, uh, to create a potential last shoulder high on this potential head and shoulder top, which is making a potential shoulder a little higher than I would have expected. But there's still the possibility. Now, the timing for this could be next Monday or so, Monday, Tuesday of next week, only a few days from now, for the symmetrical, which is not always symmetrical. As a matter of fact, it's fairly rarely exactly the same amount of time from the first shoulder high to the top of the market, the head of the formation, which I'm showing you was a bearish engulfing ER cell signal in a resistance area in overbought conditions, a great combination for a major signal, which we did get, and it did work very well all the way down to what seems like the pivot point for the last shoulder to be made on a rally. We're involved in that rally right now. So <clears throat> is it too high? Well, get there. It's not really too high. Is it terrible as far as timing is concerned? Maybe about three, four days too soon, but that's not that much. Any time now, and I've said that for a couple of days, and I could keep saying that until the end of next week, as long as prices just don't keep climbing. Okay, what happens if they keep climbing and it looks like they might? RSI, we're not that close to overbought yet. And there is that gap to close at 455.49 to be exact. So if we can get up and close that gap in the next few days and then turn down, what do you got? Well, you have a double top actually, because that rally would be too high for shoulder. The actual downside objective on the double top, if it forms at all, would be approximately the same downside objective price-wise. And that's around 405, 406, something like that, a little above 400 um, as the head and shoulder objective. So that really won't change. It's are we going to have some sort of a top formation before the break into October? I am still very much looking forward to that. The October low happens to be approximately 90% reliable in the last 30 years or so. So why not again? Last year, it was unbelievably on time and profound and blatantly obvious. So... The rally high that we're about to have, I hope, I think, I expect, could close the gap and then down, you got a double top. But somewhere between here and that rally up to 55 and a half, 455 and a half, uh, you might fail at any moment and turn down, which would be still considered a shoulder or maybe a cross between a shoulder and a double top. So, hey, we're in that little zone where you pick your poison. Do you like a double top? Same thing, objective-wise, bearish, or a shoulder, same thing, downside objective-wise. And the timing does seem appropriately in a few weeks, October. So that's a story. I am not expecting the market to go up, close the gap, and keep going up and up and up and up. There, it could. Then I'll be looking, like, looking for something like a blow-off top or some signal that it's going to start coming down from whatever high it reaches. It is a bull market. Uh, that's the best I can say. Now, I've got to wait for a little bit better definitive signals, to be honest with you. The DIA, same formation, same timing, same commentary, except the DIA is poking its head right now into some resistance as we speak today's highs. It is still up on the day a little bit, 79 cents, not much. 
And to be honest, we're up a dollar ninety on a spider. That is not a heck of a lot. So it could easily flip flop and turn back down to close lower, which could start something down. But since none of them are overbought, we're not going to get any major sell signals like a, a red bearish engulfing like we did during the top in the DIA. So I'm waiting for shoulder or no shoulder for the next few days, to be honest with you. Q's, it's going to be the same story with minor variations. Rally high, not too bad, actually. Just yesterday and again today, we're a little higher than the first shoulders. But you know that first shoulder has an inside bump or shoulder right there on July 5. So I'm thinking at this point, the high that we had, which was a bearish engulfing, but it wasn't a sell signal because we weren't overbought. On August 24th, a few days ago, last Thursday, is the inside shoulder. So symmetry still applies here, approximately Monday, Tuesday. If we start to go down, and we don't go up too much more between now and then. Now, even the Qs have a small gap to close above the market, like the DIA, and it's up right about here at 380-ish. So we can't rule that out of a little bit of a rally there. There's the gap right there. It occurred August 1st to August 2nd. And we're not too far away from it. So what happens if it closes the gap and turns down? Well, first shoulder, last shoulder I meant, yeah, probably a better picture than the others. Let's look at, and the rest of the story is the same. The 2000 had a bullish engulfing yesterday and is following through upwards a lot today. But the bullish engulfing aside, being bullish, and it's working for a day so far, um, you could still have a bearish formation in the Russell 2000. Let's see how this all evolves. Spent four, seven and a half minutes basically on all this stuff going to futures. First chart is the E-mini every time uh, in my futures workspace. So pattern, yes. Is the shoulder going to be higher than I expected? Apparently, yes. I'm going to move this up to here. Whoa, 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 stretched it, didn't want to stretch it. And that looks a lot more viable. Okay, maybe even a little too high, but you get the drift. We're into, coming into, and rattling into what could be a, either a double top or a last shoulder high. Now, next is NASDAQ. Okay, come on. I didn't draw on the arch marks for the shoulders, but the NASDAQ has a little bit better picture. Today is the first day. We're a little bit above last Thursday's high. That was one key here. Yesterday, we just basically matched it. So this is not really rallying that much more than I thought. I'll probably will draw in the neckline for you and the shoulders, et cetera, et cetera, uh, very soon, especially if we start turning down. Next chart. I'm going to start going a little faster here. Bonds. <clears throat> Bullish engulfing yesterday came down to the bid for the ER3 and is turning up again, looking great. If this continues to rally, and it looks like it could, we're first going to bang against the green resistance area. And that is, again, approximately 123 and a little bit above 124, maybe three and a half, 123 and a half. That's the first objective. Let's see what happens. Last time we were there, we stopped rallying and turned down to new lows. But at least we got a buy signal, and it's working. That's the most important thing here. Not my opinion. That's what it's actually doing. I'm trying to give you a heads up in advance. So I want it to get up into the green zone and, frankly, keep on going. Next chart. It's in your notes. Unfortunately, no bullish engulfing. These are continuation contracts, people. This is not an exact futures contract month. So your specific exact December, Christmas, bonds, notes, etc. tradable futures contract may have slightly different symbols, uh, signals, sorry, sig signals. And for that matter, symbol as well. But the root is TY, tenure. Next chart. So I'm looking for a little more strength. Crude, coming up quite a bit. 
up into a resistance area again. Keep having to move these to the right. Okay, so we just barely bumped against that resistance. We've topped out in that area before, and we got a bearish engulfing on the top of the market, and that's why I've built this strategy. It gives you many of my signals on the turning day of a big decline and a big rally or small ones. The ones that don't work, we always have a predictive stop and it's never very far away and we don't like taking big losses. We don't. Now, maybe a little more strength, maybe not. I think it's going to turn down. We're not overbought yet. Let's see what happens when we get into this resistance on the crude. If it closes above the high of this last bearish engulfing, which happened on October, uh, August 10th, that's real bullish. Look at what it's going to do. It's going to make new highs ever since November of last year, about three quarters of a year. Uh, that is a major bullish breakout. And we are having higher lows and higher lows and higher lows since the double bottom in March and May. We really haven't had a convincing breakout of that double bottom yet. So it will finally be a major breakout for the double bottom and a huge trading range, sideways trading range containing that double bottom. So that could be real bullish. Keep an eye out on uh, out for that. Any close at 84.75, uh, well, call it 85 or higher, would be very bullish. Next, heating oil. Got overbought like we thought, retracing, came down to the first support. I talked about yesterday, today, good. Next support's going to be 2.9828, whatever. Uh, and we'll see what happens. It could easily touch that. But that's coming back into another support area. And let's see if it can bounce off of that again, the way it's done the last time it came down. It didn't stop the rally despite a bearish engulfing, and it went up to it, through it, to the next level of resistance. Broke that by a bit, but flipped back down. So turning bullish. Yep, I can't help it. I don't see any lower lows. Support's beginning to hold more frequently. We're seeing higher highs. Next chart, natural gas. Not there yet. In fact, big sideways trading range. Last signal was bearish engulfing. Worked okay. Very nicely. Nothing for the last few days or week or so. Rallying a little bit at the moment. I'm neutral. Next. Uh, huge resistance area, quite a bit higher. So that's not going to get hit right away. But we are long gold from the bottom of the market and silver and platinum and copper. All four metals. Watch this. Green, bullish at the bottom. Actually, the low tick, well, the low day. Bought it the next day for ER3. ER1's always in when it turns red or green. And it's doing very, very nicely so far. Looking for higher levels, but getting very close to overbought. So a little downside correction, maybe to 1951. Might be in the card soon. Next, silver. I can't believe how good silver has been to us. We have had some unbelievably great buy and sell signals and the follow-through attached strategy executions. The last one was a buy signal almost on the low day. We're long from the exact turning day or the bullish engulfing, I should say, and that would be August 17th and on the 18th near the low of the day on the 18th. We're down just slightly at the moment. We've been overbought for three or four days. I'm looking for a correction. Today's high is getting closer to even new highs for longer periods of time, but it's overbought. So it's in resistance and I'm looking for a minor correction, at least to 24.7, eh, maybe down to 24.2. But I don't see any top yet. Next, platinum. I can't believe that we caught almost the low day and for every single day after August 17th, we have had a higher high every day. Higher high, higher high, next, 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 
next and today. I don't think I can, I can't remember the last time I saw such a steady advance. Higher closes, only one smaller, slightly lower closing after we bought it. Both ER1 and ER3. ER3 got in almost at the low of the day the next day after the signal. Love it. Platinum. Overbought. Looking for a correction. Probably will get stopped out with a profit soon. Next. Copper. I got the same statement to make with minor adjustments, except it's not quite as strong as fast. But almost a new high rally today. Looking fantastic. The yellow line, by the way, is our always present trailing stop. And because this is the daily data chart, you can't tell where it was during the day. It does move if it needs to, minute by minute. And this yellow line will reflect that until it locks in at the end of the day at the close. So it looks a little inappropriate sometimes, but it's not. It works great during the day as well. Next, soybeans. Aha! A little bit more of a downside day today. Talked about a minor exhaustion gap two days ago when we first got into overbought conditions around the previous tops. That means a little resistance. And we've turned down the second day today. Could back up a little bit more. We are dealing with a major bullish or bearish, depending upon the major breakout that we have. And it's not going to come today or tomorrow unless tomorrow's a huge up day. And then you got yourself a gigantic bullish breakout and a perpetuation of the long-term trend. But one can make a case for a very broad, very wide, even a monthly chart will show you the same thing, double top. Way back there in June of 22, over a year ago, you had a high at 1370. This top at 1430, on long, long-term charts will look like a double top. So let's see what happens here. I'm a little bearish short-term because of the overbought condition. Next, we sold the top of the market on soybean oil that had a break for a couple of days, great. It is also a double top formation, exact, almost exactly at the same prices. So I'm looking for a move down to 59 or a little lower. Uh, right away. Next, meal. Resistance area stopped in overbought condition. First down day yesterday. Finally, it's not overbought anymore and down a little bit more today. I think it could probably break down a little bit more and maybe get down to 380. That wouldn't be out of the question. Next chart. Corn. No signals lately. Bear market, we're almost a new low ground. We're not oversold, so it's going to make new lows. And we're going to be challenging the lows that were made many months ago, many months ago, way back, and should probably lower this a bit like that, uh, on July 22nd of 22. And that was about four, 471 something, two. Well, the exact price is 471 and a half. And we're at 83, not very far away. And that's what I'm expecting. New lows, new low closes, and a new lows for many, for years. Next, wheat's already done it. On the way down, got very close to oversold yesterday and bouncing a little today. I think it's going to make new lows very soon. Next, cattle. Dropping off a little bit more today. So this could still be a rally back up to test the bottom of the neckline, which is fairly slightly, uh, fairly upward slanted. But there's your first shoulder with the bearish engulfing ER sell signal on June 7th. Great. Good trade, good signal, everything good. Next bearish engulfing signal, sure as hell on top of the market, the high day period since July 20th. That's the head of the formation. And it's kind of like a little double high. We have another little double high for the last shoulder. Unfortunately, no red ER sell signal, but that looks like a bearish engulfing by just a hair. That low is 0.425 the next previous day. Yep, it is an outside down day. 
uh, I should put a little marker in there, a little red dots to show you it's a bearish engulfing. It's hard to see. But it did start along with the fact that it came back in the middle of, but it's not an official signal, and then went down for several days. So this could very well have been simply a test of the neckline. It's a little bit higher than I would have liked. I thought it probably should have stopped at 180, maybe even as little as 179, 180 area, but it didn't. Now I want new lows. I want a low under 177 to perpetuate the downside objective expectation of 171, which ends up being a test of the lows way back in June of this year, uh, a few months ago. So that's it. Next, live hogs. Hey, a bullish engulfing today, but it is not oversold, so we don't have green. Still, these bullish engulfings imply the market's going to rally. And that's exactly what I have to expect. So I'm going to go up to about the resistance here at 86 for live hogs. Next few days. Next. OJ. <laughs> ah, you can't stop a good orange juice. Holy moly. New high closing price. Unbelievable bull market. I guess I'm going to have to change to orange uh, tomato juice at breakfast instead of orange juice. It's going to get too expensive. Wow. Look at this rally. Got to be bullish. This is a new high close to the trend. We're not overbought. It looks like it's going to jump in a new high ground in the next day or two, maybe even today. Next chart. We pegged the top of the market with the bearish engulfing and it dropped like hell in Coco the next day, but got oversold. Now, this is a little unexpected. The last two days have been overbought and we're following through with more strength today, even after a little up gap yesterday. Don't forget the darn gap. The gaps are almost always closed. They're like a black hole in space that tend to suck price action back into the gap area. So I am looking for a retracement back down to 3,500, give or take a few ticks. Uh, and overbought conditions imply we're very close in time and price to a turn back down. So being high and last at the moment, you can't prove it by me, but it's supposed to turn down real soon. Next, coffee, a little resistance, but the point is buy signal on the bottom, at a bottom of the support area, looking bullish, probably will rally back up to 162. And I'm not going to be a darn bit surprised, 168, right back up to where it was uh, about a month ago, three, three four weeks ago. So I got to be friendly. Next, what are we into this? 23 minutes. Good. Uh, sugar, overbought and finally showing some signs now after a couple, three days of flip-flopping. Yesterday, it did make a higher high and then closed lower. Today, it did the exact same thing again and is overbought again and is lower at the moment again. All we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is tick down below 25.22, and today's low already is 25.23. So two ticks new low will cause today to turn red. You will have overbought conditions and a bearish engulfing, which we don't quite have yet, the bearish engulfing. It needs to get below yesterday's low. Then we have an official sell signal. We're so close, I can't help but say, we're probably turning down now, today. How much? Well, first minor objective is probably in the ballpark of around 24 yeah, 24, 24 and a half. But a much more profound level is 23 and a third. And then, of course, you've got the uh, last downside bottom of 2190. Those are my objectives. Next, cotton. Up into resistance, staying there for the moment. Very close to overbought, not quite. Might jump a little bit more. It topped out twice before recently in this price range. I'm looking for a turnaround, a bearish move, back down to at least 83.40. Probably this time even lower, but it's got to start. 
If you start closing above 89, it's a totally different situation. 89.20, let's call it. You have a new high and a new high close above a resistance area. And now it's all of a sudden turned into a bullish technical situation. Right now, you're smack at a turning point. Question mark is, will it do it like it did it twice already? Next chart. We're back to E-mini. Thanks very much for your time. You have a great day. Manana.